When forecasting the type of winter we're going to experience for the 2023-2024 season, we need to take a look at the Enzo outlook. And as you can see, the most likely scenario as we approach the end of 2023 is that we will be in a El Nino pattern where we have right around an, over an 80% chance of an El Nino building by the time we approach October and November, which will play a major role in terms of the type of conditions you should experience this winter for much of of the United States. However, the type of El Nino we're most likely going to experience is around a week to a moderate El Nino, which is definitely something we're gonna definitely need to specify when making this winter forecast because there's definitely differences when it comes to the conditions we experience during a strong El Nino and a weaker El Nino. Taking a look at the computer models forecast, at least the average between the computer models when it comes to the Nino 3 3.4 sea surf temperature anomalies we do see that the most likely scenario is that we will be anywhere between a weak um, el nino to a, a moderate el nino by the time we approach the winter time frame as you could see that the sea surf temperatures are gonna hover around the one degree at least the anomaly is gonna um, hover around one degree celsius range above average which means that it's most likely going to be in line with a moderate to a weaker el nino and that'll play a big role in terms of the type conditions we should experience in the united states so this is what typically happens during uh, El Nino winter for the United States. We see that for the southeast, it's typically cooler than average since we see um, slightly more um, jet stream dips approach the southeast, which allows the temperatures to be cooler. And we see much more moist than average conditions from the southwest as far and pretty much the entirety of the southern United States experiences more moist than average conditions thanks to a prevailing subtropical jet that moves a little bit further northward during an El Nino and typically another pattern we see during an El Nino is that the northwestern portion of the United States tends to be warmer than average and we see drier than average conditions right around the Ohio River Valley and we see that the polar jet stream is well um, far um, far to the north typically of the United States Canadian border which allows the warmer temperatures to approach the northwestern portion of the United States but for the northeast it's definitely different and it depends on the the exact strength of an El Nino because during some El Ninos it could be warmer than average but other El Ninos the temperatures could be cooler than average it really all depends on the strength of an El Nino but it seems like since we're most likely going to lean more towards a weaker to a moderate El Nino the eastern half of the United States is more likely to experience more jet stream dips and as a result a cooler than average winter so when taking a look at the temperature anomaly anomalies for the years where we either experience a weak or a moderate El Nino to uh, the long-term average, we see that much of the eastern half of the United States during a, a weaker to a moderate El Nino experiences cooler than average conditions where we see that um, right around the O'Hara Valley as well as large portions of the Northeast, you typically experience temperatures that are close to three degrees below average, which is definitely quite high considering um, when we're comparing it to average so most likely during a week or two uh, moderate El Nino most of the eastern half of the United States experiences cooler than average conditions with more of a focus right around the northeast which makes me believe that much of the eastern half of the United States will be in for a more active winter when it comes to snowstorms definitely more active than this past year we just experienced because typically during a week or El Nino we see that the jet stream prevails a lot further southward which allows the Arctic air and the strong northwesterly winds to push that colder air further southward to allow uh, to allow this winter most likely to be cooler than average and allows more nor'easters to develop thanks to a higher amount of instability which will result in more snowstorms and take a look at the western half of the United States we see that temperatures during a moderate to weak um, El Nino typically fall more closer to average, just slightly above average in some portions, but 
I'll say that for the most part, the temperatures will likely be slightly above average for much of the western half of the United States, especially since we're likely going to see the jet stream prevail southward this winter for much of the eastern half of the United States. So we're going to see a little bit of a bump in the jet stream for most of the winter for the western half of the United States. So it should mainly be either around average to slightly above average this winter when it comes to the temperatures. But we need to take a look at other factors before we can jump to that conclusion. Now taking a look at the precipitation anomalies, we also see very interesting results when we compare moderate to weak El Ninos to the long term average where typically during um, weak El Nino years and moderate El Nino years we see drier than average conditions pretty much um, cover the entirety of the Ohio Valley as well as a large portion of the Mississippi River Valley as it seems like the jet the jet stream seems to avoid a lot of um, storm systems moving through the Ohio Valley as simply um, during an El Nino we see, we see the storms impact more of the outer edges of the United States such as uh, southern Gulf Coast the East Coast as well as the West Coast while primarily um, steering the storms away from the central to the central eastern portion of the United States which is exactly what we see here where the precipitation anomalies are much lower than average but we see much more moist than average conditions for portions of the southeast coast as well as of course a large portion of California where um, typically during an El Nino we um, we see a lot more storms move ashore thanks to a subtropical jet that brings a lot of troughs right up along the coast of California so as a result you should expect more storms and it could definitely be beneficial for the drought that's been impacting California for years now so that suddenly would be um, welcome to have at least a little bit more precipitation than average um, especially when we combine it with the amount of precipitation we saw this past winter but it's always good Good to keep in mind that sometimes it could be a little bit too much precipitation and could lead to problems when it comes to flooding so keep that in mind as well that most likely for the western uh, at least the southwestern coast of the united states you're more likely to experience more moist and average conditions thanks to a weak to moderate el nino another pretty important factor we need to take a look at is a drought monitor and as you can see a lot a large portion of the united states isn't necessarily under a severe drought with the only outlier being the central portion of kansas and oklahoma but we're still months away from the winter so we could easily see the drought um we could easily see the drought um monitor change from now up until december so there's still a lot of time for the um for things to change around and for areas that are possibly drought stricken to get out of drought so we have to wait and see until maybe we're in the late summer to early fall before we can make a conclusion regarding um, how the drought will impact this winter because of course there's still a lot of time this drought monitor um, could change so I'll keep guys updated but if this were to stand um, till the winter time frame then the Midwest would be more likely to experience warmer and drier than average conditions because typically during a drought it's very difficult to get rid of overnight so yeah so that we could so if this drought let's say stays here till the late summer to early fall then it's more likely to stay for the entirety of the winter because typically during a drought we see a very dominant ridge that prevents a lot of storm systems from being able to penetrate the drought stricken areas so we see a lot less precipitation than average and since there aren't allowed a lot of clouds to reflect back the shortwave radiation from the sun um, out to space and we see more of that shortwave radiation get absorbed by the surface and dry soil heats up a lot faster than moist soil so we see warmer than average chapters as well during a drought so we're gonna need to wait and see if this stays but uh, there's still a lot of time so i'll keep you guys updated over the next several months regarding the winter forecasts and how the drought monitor will affect it once we approach that time period where it becomes a more reliable to project the winter when it comes to the drought we're seeing um at least during the current time frame 
Another thing that's pretty important when forecasting what type of winter your area is likely to experience is the sea surf temperature anomalies. And we do see that much of the Pacific West Coast is experiencing sea surf temperatures much cooler than average, which of course would promote that um, the West Coast to experience cooler than average te air temperatures since the sea surf temperatures play a major role in determining the air, the surrounding air temperature because if the sea surf temperatures are cooler than average, then they radiate less energy for the air molecules to move as fast and we see less energy between the air molecules which reduces the temperature and that would occur if the sea surf temperatures were to stay cooler than average till the winter time frame but again still a lot of time for the sea surf temperatures to change from now up until december but if this were to continue then i'd sus uh, i'd suspect that those along the immediate west coast despite the fact that an el nino does bring warmer than average conditions typically along the west coast um i would i would believe that i still would suspect that the sea surf temperatures will at least balance it out closer to average or potentially below average especially if you're right up along the coast but we're gonna need to wait and see if that um if those sea surf temperatures maintain along the west coast and take a look at the east coast we see that sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average and i expect this to continue even as we approach the winter time period since the sea surf temperatures been much warmer than average along the western atlantic for quite some time now especially since we're in a in a positive atlantic multi-decto oscillation which does promote warmer than average sea surf temperatures so i do expect that is this will play a role in terms of raising up the temperature along some portions of the east coast as we approach winter time so that's at least something to keep in mind as well but i do believe that in what typically happens during a week to moderate el nino will still balance out the sea surf the effect that the sea surf temperatures would have along the east coast so take a look at what the cfs model forecasts when it comes to temperature anomaly over the next over at least during the wind early winter months and we do see that the cfs model is expecting warmer than average chapters all across the board especially in the central midwest right around the mississippi river valley however i take this with a grain of salt because the cfs model always has a strong bias towards bringing much warmer than average chapters throughout the united states in any given month so take this with a grain of salt as i definitely i'll definitely would lean to previous um um previous um el nino years to determine what will happen this year when it comes to um, temperatures as well as precipitation because the cfs model is a little bit too biased when it comes to um temperature and it as it typically always wants to bring temperatures much warmer than average in the united states which a lot of times is not necessarily the case so keep that in mind when taking a look at the cfs model when forecasting this winter so here's my 2023-2024 winter season forecast. So for the Northeast, I'm expecting more winter storms than usual this year. And this is because typically during a week to moderate El Nino, we see more pronounced jet stream dips, which brings a arctic air further southward and that will create enough instability to produce more nor'easters and the temperatures of course will be cold enough to support for more snowfall so i do believe that the northeast will be in for more winter storms this winter and typically during a week to moderate el nino we're more likely to see storm systems move along the edges of the united states so since the east coast is right up along the coast and on the edge of the united states we're more likely to experience more moist than average conditions combined with the fact that it's going to be cooler than average i expect more winter storms this winter def, um at least compared to average and definitely more than what we experienced this past winter and taking a look at the southeast i'm expecting more storms than usual thanks to the fact that typically during an el nino we see a prevailing subtropical um, jet move further northward which allows more troughs to move towards the southeast and since the sea surf temperatures are warmer are expected to be warmer than average even as we approach winter that'll create more instabilities around that area more convection overall for more storms to develop and then for the portions of the midwest including the mississippi the northern mississippi river valley as well as the ohio river valley i expect 
Temperatures would be colder than average. Thanks again, thanks to the fact that we're gonna to that typically that's typically what happens during a week to moderate El Nino. We see more pronounced jet stream dips and um, taking a look further westward, I'm expecting it to be warmer and drier than average because since we're going to see uh, um, much more significant jet stream dips this winter for much of the eastern half of the United States, they're typically ha they're, um, that typically leads to a bump along the western half of the United States or a positive um, PNA pattern which allows the warmer air and the strong southerly flow to bring those warmer temperatures further northward and I expect it to be drier as well in this area partially due to the drought that this area is experiencing as well but right up along the west coast I'm expecting more storms than average because that's simply what happens during an El Nino we see a subtropical jet move straight towards California which brings a lot more troughs and storms in general along the coast so that's only something to keep in mind along the west coast um, because this could be you could be in for another um, packed year when it comes to storms and potentially atmospheric rivers as well but this is my 2023-2024 winter season forecast if you want even more in detail forecast regarding what type of winter you're bound to experience um, as we approach um, the end of the year and into early next year just make sure to comment down below your specific area and low or location and I'll make sure to give you guys an in detail forecast for your specific area regarding what type of winter you're bound to experience um, this season so comment down below if you're interested but yeah guys um, I thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content like this I upload almost on an everyday basis so make sure to subscribe if you're interested i plan to make my fall forecast as well more winter forecasts like this and much more weather related content so thank you guys um, for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more